Hello and welcome. Today is a good day. Good day in the sense that you are alive and so am I. We are grateful to be in the land of the living in spite of all that is happening around us. Today's message is practical, uplifting, and transformational. And I hope you are ready to get in or dive in with me. And let's make use of our time together. It will be a great thing if you can invite your friends or share this message with as many of your constituencies because this message is so necessary in these times that we live in. Evidently, we are the place in life where we are processing so much, dealing with so much, and looking for so many answers and wondering where answers are coming from. Every one of us today want improving of life, conditions to be better, and life to give us the fullest of its meaning. No one intentionally wants to fail. Every one of us wants to be one step ahead of the game. I hope and I wish, above all things, that today's message will offer you some direction and also hope and give you the opportunity to step into your own victory. Are you on a journey? Are you about to do something amazing? And Are you embracing a new day and looking forward to a brighter day? Then let's talk about thinking ahead. This message, thinking ahead, is critical. There's a portion of scripture that I like a lot, which is inspirational, motivational. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Amazing, the Bible did not say, do not think about tomorrow. It said, don't worry about tomorrow. You and I can be thinking about tomorrow without worrying about it. Let me say it again. You and I can think about tomorrow, but we are encouraged not to worry about tomorrow. Because worriness is weariness. When you worry, you disturb yourself. When you worry, you stretch your mind. When you worry, you interrupt your emotions. When you worry, you become anxious. And when you worry, little problems become large or big problems. Small issues become major issues. And often, worry doesn't solve any problem. So do not worry. Think about tomorrow, though, but don't worry about tomorrow. And to think about tomorrow means you are thinking ahead. Today suffice. Today is here. It's our reality. Tomorrow is our hope. And we are aspiring to be able to have a better day tomorrow. What happens when you go into bed? Especially when you have children. You kiss them goodnight. Some of you will read them bedtime stories. And some will pray for the children. And say goodnight. You tuck them in. And it says tomorrow. When you turn off the light. And you walk out of your children's room. As a parent. Your hope is that tomorrow morning they will wake up bright and early with excitement and joy. And they rush into your room or you go into their room to prepare them for school or for breakfast with a kiss. With questions occasionally asked, how was your night? You expected 
when you put your child to sleep last night that you see them the next day. You are thinking ahead. And often if they have to go to school, most parents, they will select the child's clothing and what they will need for the next day. So when the morning comes, they are not now looking around for their clothes, looking around for their notebooks, looking around for their pens, looking around for their socks or hair bow, but everything is ready in its place to prepare that child to go to school. Therefore, I want to give credit to all mothers because mothers take the time. Not only is he helping John to get ready, but fixing Mary, making sure that her bow is in place, making sure that she's probably tucked in and done well so that when you step out of the house or daddy gets the children in the car, daddy will say, man, you look beautiful. Boy, you look handsome. Have a good day and watch them go to school and come back. We prepare our children not just for the day. We prepare them for tomorrow. So we have to always be thinking ahead. Just as we prepare ourselves for tomorrow. We have to constantly look forward for tomorrow. When you are newly employed, you don't hope to work just for the day. You look forward for extended days on this job. Hopefully years. You gain experience. You pay it well. And hopefully promotion and have a good career. We always have to think ahead. In life, if you don't think ahead, something is wrong. It's always good to think ahead. And we have to consider tomorrow as not something that is negative, but tomorrow as a positive term. Tomorrow, or the term tomorrow, is relative. Because to many people, tomorrow is far away. Especially if people are in a bind or people are challenged or people are in difficulty. They see tomorrow as something that is quite distant. That's why I said tomorrow, the term tomorrow is relative. To others, tomorrow is very near because they are anticipating something or looking forward to something. So to some, tomorrow is far to others, tomorrow is near. And there are those also who think tomorrow is now. It's like, I want it now. Why do I wait for tomorrow? I need it now. So tomorrow, as we see it, is relative. For some, tomorrow is now. For some, tomorrow is ahead of them, which is very near. And to others, tomorrow is too far away. Every decision that we make today Let's make these decisions considering tomorrow without worrying about tomorrow. And that is not an easy thing to do. We always get worried, human beings. We always get anxious. We always get frigid. We always think that, hey, I have to do this. I have to do this. And we get so anxious. We wonder, what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Well, consider tomorrow when you're making decisions. But don't allow worry to overtake your mind. Because if you allow worry to overtake you, thinking ahead will be interrupted by thinking in confusion. The Bible makes it clear also about our thinking. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, it says, as a man thinks in his heart. In other words, as a person thinks, so they are. So is he, or so is she. Whatever you think, it's the kind of person you are. You are what you think, and you think what you are. So we have to understand that our thinking has a lot to do with our tomorrow. How do you see tomorrow? How do you process the thoughts of today, which will have an impact in your tomorrow? There are some people who think on their feet. They reason things out before they act. And there are those who just are impulsive. They just do things as it comes. You know, when you are maturing in life, or you are one who've been, or you are one who've been through things and you've gained experience, you realize that when you are making decisions, it is not on impulse. It is based on your experience or based on your maturity, so that you think 
right. Now, this is what we tell our young ones. We tell our children, think, think. You have to think. You have to think. Process things. Don't just make decisions. Don't follow the crowd. Think of what you are doing. Think of what you are saying. Think of what you are about to do. Think of where you are about to go. Think about what you are trying to do. Thinking becomes very important. And I want to make this point clear. Whenever you find people who think a lot, they are very reasonable. They are very reasonable. And also they are logical in their, by nature. People who think a lot are very reasonable. And also, they are logical. We have to think. In other words, we have to allow logic to take its course. And we have to be reasonable at the same time. Thinking is not bad. Thinking is important. Are you a thinker? Whether you think positive or negative, are you a thinker? Because a person who thinks is usually reasonable and logical by nature. And let me tell you some of the powerful qualities of thinkers. When you find great thinkers, the first thing you discover about great thinkers is that they are planners. Every great thinker is a planner. They don't do things without planning. Good thinkers, right thinkers are planners. They don't act on impulse. They plan what they do. This is a, is a quality that thinkers have, especially great thinkers. When you find a person who thinks a lot, they are logical, they try to be reasonable in their outlook of things. They are usually planners, number one. Number two, when you find a thinker, a good thinker, or a person who has developed their thinking skills, you will discover that they are strategists. Thinkers are planners, number one. Two, thinkers are strategists. They strategize every move. I mean every move they strategize. Every move they strategize. Don't just leave things to chance. If you are going to think ahead, don't leave things to chance. You have to be a planner. Number two, you have to be a strategist. Everything that you do, every move, make sure that you strategize. There's nothing wrong strategizing. It's better to put the right foot forward. So if you make it, at least you know you're standing, than to stand in one position and just dream and not do anything. Plan. Plan, number one. That is a great sign of a good thinker. Number two, he's a strategist. A strategist. So when you find a thinker who plans, you find out that that thinker is also a strategist. They strategize every move. They strategize things that they do. They strategize where they go. They strategize who they partner with. They strategize in their relationships. They strategize. I mean, because they think, you plan, you strategize. And the third quality of a great thinker is the implementers. They implement. When you find a good thinker, one who is thinking ahead, you find out that the person is a planner. Number two, the person is a strategist. And number three, the person is an implementer. They implement at least they put effort in. They put out good effort. They put out the right steps or put out or make sure that things happen. They implement. They just don't have great ideas and keep them. They just don't come up with strategies and leave it there. They take one step forward. They become implementers. They implement. They implement. That's thinking ahead. That's what you do. You plan. You also strategist. And third, you 
implement. And the fourth quality of a great thinker is that he or she is result-oriented. Thinkers are result-oriented. They like results. Whatever they plan, implement, they want to see results. They think ahead by being planners. Number two, being strategists. Number three, being implementers. And number four, being result-oriented. I believe, and I want to say it again, I believe that in the midst of this pandemic and this global scare and the challenges we all face with COVID-19, people who think ahead are not just waiting for this virus to pass. They are not just sitting and lullaby. They're not just sitting hoping that things will change one day. They are still taking advantage of these moments and these times. They are actually planning how do I navigate or how do I plan or how do I go through this process whilst I'm waiting for this pandemic to pass, COVID-19 to pass, this virus to go away. What are the new plans I'm putting in place? I'm going to come up with a strategy. For this plan that I have, they come up with strategies and they come with strategies and they just put strategies in place. And the third thing is at least they implement, hoping for the best, be result oriented. Don't sit back and hope that things will get better. At least take a position. Don't sit back and think and hope that things will change, at least look forward, making sure that you're putting things in place, making sure that you are looking ahead, and also telling yourself that I will not sit, fold my arms, and hope that things will just change and come back to normal. Think ahead. Come up with a plan. Strategize. Don't be afraid to implement. Take a step forward. Take a step towards. And meet your strategy with action by implementing. And third, expect nothing but the best. Look forward for the best. People who don't think ahead are often caught off guard and usually miss out on destined appointments. Do you know that your life is destined and you are always invited to special appointments? It may not be verbal, but your life and the direction you're going says that you are destined by appointments. You are destined appointed. You are going somewhere. So you have to start thinking ahead. So you don't miss out or you don't lose out on the greatest opportunity that life has for you. Now, people who think ahead, don't wait till last minute and blame everything else on what could have been. You see, you don't fatten the cow on market day. You make sure that you've taken care of the cow previous weeks, previous months, previous Years. So when it's time to take this cow to market, you don't have to worry about commanding the price that you believe that this cow will bring home. Think ahead before the market time. Think ahead before the market day. Don't wrap up now and start preparing your resume. Do it ahead of time. Don't just sit back and hope that, hey, I'll get married. I'll be hoping that I'll get married one day. Start preparing yourself. Put your mind in that framework. Get your body back in shape. If you're a man and you want to be a father, listen, put your mind back in shape. Put your body back in shape so that you will be able to function as the man is supposed to function. Be able to become the father you're supposed to be. Have enough energy to make your child expecting 
your child in the future to be, your wife in the future to be, to be proud of you. Wives, the same thing. Think ahead. Some of you know that I know I hope to get married one day. Man, that's good thinking. Do you have a plan? Do you have a strategy that you can implement? And are you result oriented? Then at least learn to do some things that wives do. Learn to do some things that mothers do. And learn to do some things that future grandmothers will do. At least start from somewhere. You got to think ahead. This time and age, with what we are experiencing all around us, borders being shut, business changing, careers changing, everything changing, you and I have to start thinking ahead. It is important. And remember, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Do these things without allowing worry to take over. It is important for you and I to understand that these are critical times. If you are thinking ahead, you will minimize your worries by 97%. Let me say it again. If you are thinking ahead, you will minimize your worries and anxiety by, 70, by 97%. Why do you even worry in the first place? And why do you allow worry to take over your life? Most of us worry, but yet we deny we are worrying. Governments are worrying, heads of states are worrying, presidents are worrying, premiers are worrying, parents are worrying, educators are worrying, doctors are worrying, young men and women are worrying to the extent that our children watch us worry and they attract the same curse, they start worrying. So when you have a child or you have a young person growing in an environment where worrying triumph, it doesn't take long for them to live in conspiracy theorism. It doesn't take long for them to worry themselves about unnecessary things. Today you have little children who are worried that the world is coming to an end next year. There are children who are worried that, hey, I better grow up quickly and get a gun because very soon there's going to be war breaking out all over America. And this is what is happening to so many well-meaning Christians. They are worried that the world is going to come to an end and they better arm themselves. They are thinking ahead but thinking the wrong way. They are thinking ahead but thinking fearfully. And they are planning their lives based on false imaginations. And we have children who are also thinking that very soon we are going to starve so we, have to, we better start hoarding food. Remember the food you are hoarding has expiration date. It's very funny and I say this to religious leaders out there and I say this to conspiracy theorists out there. You are deceiving people and telling them to go and hoard food. Some have dunk bunkers because they are afraid that by the end of this year, the world is going to collapse. Aliens are going to evade us. Do you know how many people, well-meaning people, innocent people, I mean, very smart people who are, who are paranoid and, and, and they are thinking ahead, but this is the wrong one. And what are they doing? They are practicing fear. They are exhibiting fear. Their nerves are on urge. And they are scared of tomorrow because they think and they believe that the world is about to collapse on them. And this is all they know. Worry, 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 worry. What is worry? Why worry? What is the cause of worry? Let me tell you straight. When one allows something to disturb his or her mind repeatedly, such one is worrying. Again, when one allows something to disturb his mind repeatedly, he or she is worrying. 
Do you want to know whether you are worrying or not? Let me give you the simple test for yourself to know whether you are worrisome or not. Is something distracting your mind and affecting your inner peace? Is something distracting your mind and affecting your inner peace? If something truly is disturbing your mind and affecting your inner peace, it means that you are worrying. Why do you lose your happiness and why do you lose your joy? You have allowed your inner peace to be disturbed and your mind affected by distraction. You are worrying. Do you know what worry does? And the forms that worries take? Worry many times takes on the form of fear. Because worry, once it turns into fear, will make you see danger when there's nothing there. It will make you see impossibilities when it's actually possible. Worry will make you see failure ahead when in actual fact success is imminent. Worry turns into fear. Fear sees danger. Fear sees impossibility. And fear sees failure ahead. Stop worrying. No wonder the greatest teacher of all, the maestro, he's the master teacher, Jesus Christ. He says, don't worry. Which of you worrying have changed anything? Which of you worrying have solved any problem? Well, you know, I, but I've got to worry. Don't worry. I learned the principle of being concerned and not worried. If you are concerned without worrying, you'll be able to solve problems, solve challenges, and deal with challenging and pressing issues. Stop worrying. Worry doesn't solve a problem. Worry breaks your system. And worries, once it takes over, can literally affect your immune system. Worry can literally suppress blood flow. Worry has a way of even introducing cancer into uh, creating cells, cancer cells in your system. Worry, worry, worry. Because worry can kill, worry can destroy, and worry can maim actually your potential as a human being. Do not worry. And keep this again in mind. People who worry often live in anxiety and constantly in fear of the unknown. Don't live in anxiety. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Be positive towards tomorrow. Be positive towards a brighter day. In spite of it all. In spite of it all. Even though we are talking about worries, and let's know that truly, it is not just easy to snap out of it. But I can tell you how you get freedom from worry. You need deliverance. Some of you need to find people who can pray for you or speak to you or find ways and means to get to you so that they will address the root cause and help you to be pulled away or delivered from this spirit of worry because worry is a spirit. Anything that can transfer onto your loved ones, touch a fetus, a baby unborn, to the extent where a baby can even react in the tummy. Anything that can affect a relationship can destroy one's confidence and reduce one to nothing needs deliverance, number one. Or two, a renewing of the mind. The only way you can be free from worry, yes, you can't just snap out of it, is through deliverance and renewing of your mind. As a man thinks, so we see. Are you thinking right? If you are thinking right, then you always want to think ahead. You always want to think ahead. You plan. You strategize. You implement. And you have the expectation 
of a better outcome. What does the Bible say in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6? Philippians 4, 6 basically says this. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. It is not good to be anxious. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be anxious. I remember a story I read in the Bible. That I read a story in uh, Matthew chapter 25. It talks about the ten uh, 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 virgins. And it says, five were wise and five were foolish. In other words, the ones who were foolish they were the ones who didn't think ahead. They didn't plan for the future. They didn't plan. They went to a wedding by invitation and instead of having oil in their lambs, they didn't. They waited until the announcement came forth that the, behold, the groom is coming. And here they were asking the people, other five that had oil in their lamb, please, can we get some from you? He said, no, 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 it's too late. You have to plan ahead. Plan ahead. Don't sit back and hope that things will change. Well, you know what? I am trusting God. I am trusting God. I don't have to make any plans. I am a person who believes in prayer. I am trusting God. God will fix it. I know God performs miracles. He can do things like that. Yes, God does miracles. But whilst he's doing miracles, he's giving you faculties to put things in perspective. Because miracles come to those who expect it. <laughs> if you're not expecting it, you've not planned to expect, you don't plan for it, then nothing comes. And you know, Bible tells us plainly, that Jesus used that example. He says, do you believe I can do this? That means, do you believe that what you are asking for can be done? Plan, look forward. Be result-oriented. Ready to implement. Strategize. And plan. It is necessary. It's necessary. Think ahead. Thinking ahead. We got to do it. We can't leave things to chance. We have to think ahead. Let me tell you a story about a man and instruction concerning a gadget. He says, a man bought a new gadget, and this gadget was unassembled. And of course, after reading and rereading the instructions, he couldn't figure it out how it went together. So finally, he sought the help of an old handyman who was working in his backyard. Remember, the man who bought it read it over and over again. He just couldn't figure it out. So he saw this handyman who was working in his backyard. He went to him, and the old fellow picked up the pieces. And this is what he said to the old man. He said, you know, sir, I have this thing, and I really need help. I have studied them. And I tried to assemble these gadgets, and I've done the best I could, and it's not working. So this old fella took the pieces. He didn't read the manual. He just studied them, the pieces, looked at the parts and how they were cut, and he began to assemble the gadget. Just in a short time, he was able to put it together. So the man who could read and I've read it many times and couldn't put it together. He was reading the manual, by the way. And the old man was just studying the parts and how they were cut. So the one who read it and didn't understand brought it to the handyman. And by the way, this handyman is not educated. He just looked at the way the things were cut. And when he said to the man, after everything was put together in amazement, how did you do this without even looking at the instruction? The answer that the old man gave him was a very amazing answer. He said, you know what? I can't read. And when a fellow can't read, what he's got to do is what? Think. Many of us, we are reading instructions, but we are not thinking. God wants you to be a thinker than just reading instruction. So for you who read the Bible and not thinking... You are doing the promises of God is just injustice. Don't just read it and quote it. Are you thinking in the process? There are so many people who are reading the book, 
but don't think of what the book says. Are you just thinking? And if you are just thinking, then you are doing more than a person who is just reading and not thinking of what he or she is reading. Do you realize that when you read a story, the story doesn't make sense to you until you think and you put yourself in the story. The old man could not read, but what he did is amazing, he could think. Let me give you this advice. There are many smart, clever, and also intellectual people out there. Unfortunately, they are not thinkers. Many people fail because of lack of thinking. You've got to think. Thinking ahead. Many, many people, good people fail because of lack of thinking. If you lack thinking, you lack planning. If you lack planning, you have no strategy. If you have no strategy, there is no implementation. And without implementation, failure is inevitable. Let me say it one more time. Many people fail for the lack of thinking. And if you lack thinking, you lack planning. And if you lack planning, definitely you have no strategy. And if you have no strategy, there's no implementation. And without implementation, failure is inevitable. You've got to be diligent. You've got to think ahead. Just as the Word of God says, he who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is in the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with the child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything or who makes all things. Therefore, in the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which one will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. You've got to plan ahead. Don't sit back and hope that things will fall in place. You better think ahead. And the good Lord has great plans for you. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of good. Thoughts of good. I don't think any evil for you. God says, I'm thinking well of you. I want to give you hope and a future. Therefore, think ahead. The least you will get is success. The least of what you can get from God is success. (laughs) Let me say it again. The least of what you can get from God is success. So keep thinking ahead. Remember, you may start small, yet your end will be greater. So there's nothing wrong thinking. Don't leave things out to chance. And don't just say, that you know what? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Still think. And think ahead. Come up with plans. Come up with strategies. And once you've come up with a strategy, be willing to implement it. And you have to follow the instruction. You don't know which one is going to come good. Whether this or that or both will come well. Be result oriented. So today, whatever thoughts you are going to display... Remember, it will have an impact on your tomorrow. Thinking ahead. You and I don't have any choice, but to think ahead. Instead of thinking in the past and let the past become our obstacle, let's think ahead so that we can see the steps to climb. Thinking ahead. You have an edge. Let's use this moment And let's maximize this time and let's think ahead because we will not fail looking forward. But we stumble 
when we look back, thinking ahead is the right thing to do. I hope this message has helped you. And if this message has at least brought some light or some hope and encouragement to you, why don't you share this with your friends? And I'll urge you to do something. Listen to it over and over again. If you can listen to it seven times, at least in three days, or seven times in seven days, the same message over and over again, again, it will affect you in a positive way. And the results that will come out of your life or what you will add into your life will be greater than you expected. I wish you well. Stay safe and know that thinking ahead is the right way to go. God bless you and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching and on behalf of Life International, we wish you God's very best. It is our hope, our prayer and desire to inspire you regularly and make sure that you succeed in every area of your life. We would like to give you an opportunity to contribute to Life International so that our broadcast can reach many more around the world. Continue watching, share us, and mention us to all of your friends. Thank you so much, and God bless you.